everyone, I'm Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel, and today I'm going to show you how to use Google Calendar to share your family schedule with all the members of your family in real time. See if you can relate to this scenario. It's Tuesday morning, as your son is heading out the door and you have 500 things on your mind, you realize you haven't given him the plan for the day, so you run after him yelling, Remember, today's Tuesday, so I'm picking you up from school and taking you directly to tennis. Do you have your tennis shoes? Oh, no, okay, I'll pack them. Also, Dad's picking you up from tennis, so make sure you call him when you are finished. And I'm gonna be taking your sister to choir, so I won't be there when you get back. Or how many times have you had this conversation with your husband or significant other, where he says, wait, what? what is the schedule this weekend? Who has a tournament? Where, where is it? Who's driving? Can you just... Can you just review everything that's going on both days for me? Does any of this sound familiar? Okay, I, I really can't promise that this methodology is going to solve the problem of everyone wanting you to review their schedule for them on a moment's notice like you're the family admin, but this will ensure that they actually have that information on hand rather, rather than having to hunt you down for it. I've always been a little obsessed with calendars. When I was very young, I wrote my journal in a cast off weekly planner of my mom's. The year was always wrong by like two or three years, but that didn't deter me from filling in the days and scratching through all the dates. I used to look at the empty pages and just wish for some appointments so that I could very importantly schedule them into these the open pages of my young life. Like everyone else these days, now I feel like maybe I'd like several fewer appointments every day. They don't seem important as much as they seem mandatory. For years, I used a weekly planner and I color coded the events and blocked off time. When electronic calendars came out, I was an early adopter. I missed a lot of the things about paper planning, like that tactile remembrance of writing or being able to flip easily to a future week and being able to use visual aids like larger letters or different colors or drawings to differentiate appointments immediately. Though I miss these things, and I still do, electronic calendars offered two important advantages. Number one, the ability to keep my calendar in a small package, thereby allowing me to have it accessible at all times, was important. And number two, the ability to enter recurring appointments with a couple of clicks was a lifesaver. So those two advantages, plus my constant push to digitize and become paperless, made me fully embrace electronic calendaring despite some of the inconveniences. So I'm a Google Apps fan. I use Gmail and Google Drive and Google Calendar. Everyone in my family has a Gmail account and therefore has access to all of the free Google services, including Google Calendar. The system that I'm going to introduce today involves creating an additional calendar on your Google account, the family calendar, and then sharing that calendar with everyone in your family. So here are some of the advantages. Uh, invites don't work for me. You don't have to worry in this new system about inviting each member of your family to each event like this. I found this to be tedious, error prone, and spamalicious. Been there, done that, no thanks. I have issues with Google Calendar's invite system. I feel like unless you're very careful, you will spam every invitee every time you make a tiny edit to your event. And who wants that in their inbox? Plus, I, keep, I kept forgetting to invite people, and I didn't love having to make um, invite decisions for every event. Here's another ben benefit. It's expandable. I can toggle this calendar on and off on my mom's phone if she's staying with the kids or my in-laws. Um, this would also be good for nannies or for summer babysitters. Um, also, it helps with um, details. Everyone knows, or at least doesn't have an excuse for not knowing, what's happening all the time. Where is each member of the family? Um, I put carpooling arrangements in the event titles so the kids always know who's driving. I embed um, event detail in the notes section, if I think about it and I have time, so that everyone has access to that same information. And this is maybe my favorite advantage, location. I always fill out the location line of every event <clears throat> so that I don't have to text my husband um, an address and directions at inopportune times. So here's how you do it. The first step is to make two Google calendars. First, you'll need to have a Google account, and so will all the members of your family. They don't have to use the email address or any of the other Google services unless they want to. This is simply a sharing mechanism for calendars. 
From your Google account, you will need to add a family calendar. So that would give you a minimum of two calendars, a personal one and a family one. You could keep it all on one calendar, but then when you share that calendar, your entire family is gonna know all about your daytime business events and lunches with friends. For reasonably obvious reasons, I prefer to keep those things on a different calendar. In Google Calendar, go to My Calendars, then create a new calendar and enter the name. I chose Family Calendar. Um, and then we'll come back to the sharing settings later. Step number two, choose calendars for each event. Now, for each appointment that you put in, you'll need to choose what calendar it appears in. It just is one additional step. I have the family calendar listed as the default on my phone since I tend to have more family appointments than personal ones. Um, in order to do this, go to settings, then calendar, and then choose family calendar as the default. I can't figure out how to do this from a browser, so I have to change the calendar more frequently if I enter in the appointment by browser. You'll need to create some behavioral rules for yourself to determine when an appointment goes in which calendar. Here are mine. For the family calendar, um, I put in appointments that happen after the kids get home from school or on the weekends. Even if it specifically pertains to me, it's useful for everyone to have an idea of where I am in the evenings and on weekends. For my own personal calendar, I put in appointments that happen during school hours. I do make exceptions um, for the kids' doctors and dentist appointments that happen during the school day since those are relevant to the family. Also, if the kids are on break or my husband's taking a day off, I put some of those appointments on the family calendar. Um, and if I'm using an appointment as a reminder tool for myself, I try not to clutter up the family calendar. For example, I have an appointment called Don't Forget to Put Out Donations for Purple Heart to Pick Up. Well, only I need to see that. Um, now we're on to step three, which is check regularly to make sure that you're using the right calendars. This actually is pretty easy if you use my rules. Google Calendar makes the appointments from different calendars different colors. And because my rules basically follow the time of day, you can quickly scan your calendar to make sure that all of the stuff in the morning and early afternoon are in one color and the stuff in the evenings and weekends are in another. Once you're doing this habitually, you won't need as many deliberate checks. Plus, it will be slightly jarring when something's out of place once you get used to the color scheme. Okay, now we're at step four. You have to share the family calendar with the other members of your family. So now it's time to share this calendar um, with everyone else. If you didn't do this when you originally set up the calendar, go back into the settings of the calendar and share it with the other members of your family by email address. From a browser, go to My Calendars, then Settings, and then add all of the emails of the members of your family. You can choose what kind of access you want to give them. Do you want them to only see the appointments you have entered, or do you want them to be able to edit appointments on the family calendar themselves? Once you've done that, you should be able to turn on access to the family calendar within a browser. So make sure everyone has this calendar turned on. You may have to go into the Google Calendar setting page and check the box to have the calendar show up. Um, number five turn the calendar on for mobile devices. The next step is to turn the calendar, family calendar on each mobile device for your family because if your family can't see the calendar on their mobile devices, then what is even the point? <laughs> I don't have a droid, so I'm not certain, but I'm assuming that because Google services are indigenous to that operating system, that this should be a reasonably straightforward process on those phones to add in a calendar. But on Apple devices, here's how you add the family calendar to each of your devices. Um, go to settings, then calendar, then accounts, and then choose to add account. Pick Google, then put in your family member's Google email address. Remember, this is not yours, this is theirs, um, and their password, and turn on the calendar option. You can obviously also turn on other services if desired. Now when you go into the calendaring app, it should show up under calendars. Unfortunately, it's not always quite that easy. If it doesn't show up, don't panic. Um, you'll have to go into each individual device and go to the following URL, which is listed. Um, and hopefully the calendar will show up there. Check the box, hit save, um, and now let's see whether that calendar shows up on the iPhone. It might take a moment or two, but generally, voila. One optional step is that you can change the color um, on your iPhone. I don't love all the extra mental processing involved in having to remember that my calendars are different colors on different devices. So I changed the color of the calendar on my mobile device to match the color on the browser. Um, you have to go into calendars, then tap the icon to the right of the calendar 
and then select the color that you want. Okay, so now you can see that I'm all synced up on my browser and my mobile device and that my kids and my husband can only see the appointments that I make available to them through Family Calendar. Again, you can play around with the permission settings depending on how trustworthy and detail-oriented the members of your family are. I can imagine plenty of families with older kids opening up those settings to allow anyone to add and modify appointments. That is not happening in my house right now, or else I'm afraid that all of my son's least fun activities would just poof, magically disappear. For now, my husband and I are the only ones who can add or edit appointments. Anyway, this is the system that works best for us. I will not lie and tell you that I never go running out the door yelling 10,000 instructions for the day, but it definitely makes life a little easier. Let me know if you have questions or a better system to share in the comments section. And thanks for watching.